My name is Phil Sanders. I'm the director, master printer of the Robert Blackburn Printmaking Workshop, a program of the Elizabeth Foundation for the Arts. Printmaking is a very diverse field with a very long history, but its most important uh, beginning started with the idea of disseminating information to a large amount of people as quickly as possible. Prints are all around us. There are our magazines, our newspapers, printed materials, t-shirts, or an even more simplified version of how we all experience printmaking every day with our money that we handle. All of these are for different forms of printmaking that are all derived from very old techniques that are still practiced today. Printmaking in and of itself is a very simple idea. It's a transfer of one image from one surface to another. In fine art, what artists have been typically focused on is getting their own creative ideas out to a larger audience. And the particular qualities of printmaking that are unique is the ability to reproduce an idea exactly over and over. As artists began using more and more contemporary printmaking techniques for their own artistic ends, it became important to have the greatest access to the technology, which is where the field of collaborative fine art printmaking evolved out of. Highly skilled technical craftsmen or craftspeople who had the advanced knowledge of current and contemporary techniques working in collaboration with an artist who may not have had any prior experience to printmaking whatsoever, but they have a particular artistic goal in mind. And with those two individuals together, a work of art could be produced that could not have been produced in any other way. Contemporary collaborative printmaking evolved into the field that we know it today during the heyday of what we call the printmaking renaissance. So the early 1960s and 1970s, there were several print shops across the United States and a few in Europe that were heavily involved in Robert Blackburn's printmaking workshop. It began in 1948 as a means of providing access to printmaking for any artist from anywhere in the world, regardless of race, gender, socioeconomic background, or religious persuasion. At the time, the United States was experiencing a burgeoning artistic environment here in New York City at the close of the Second World War. These artists had come from different ateliers or workshops in Europe, primarily in France, where the concept of working with a technician or printer had been established for many, many years. What was different about Bob Blackburn's printmaking workshop was the element of collaboration between the technician and the artist. The primary focus was innovation and collaboration. So printers were being trained to push new techniques that were coming from the industrial printing field and bring them into the fine art world. And artists were evolving new ways of thinking about art and new ways of looking at the world. And those two people put together we were creating new techniques and new approaches towards printmaking. The printmaking Renaissance in New York City in 1948, begun by Bob Blackburn and other artists like Will Barnett at the printmaking workshop, spread to many other places in the United States. Bob Blackburn in 1957 became the first master printer for Universal Limited Art Editions, or ULAE. Tanya Grossman, who the Tanya Grossman galleries have been named after here at the Museum of Modern Art, was the founder of Universal Limited Art Editions. And her goal was to put artists in collaboration with artists master printers like Bob Blackburn so that they could work in collaboration to produce works of art that had never been seen before as well as push the medium. Bob Blackburn was the first collaborating printer with artists like Larry Rivers, Robert Rauschenberg, Jasper Johns, Robert Motherwell, Jim Dine, and the list can go on and on and on. Bob Blackburn's influence on the field of fine art printmaking is one that is largely known amongst artists as well as printers, but not as much outside of the printmaking community. The printmaking Workshop began in 1948 and closed its doors in 2001. Bob Blackburn passed away in 2003, and the workshop, under his particular vision, reopened as a full program of the Elizabeth Foundation for the Arts. Today, what we do there is much like what Bob did with the printmaking workshop in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, which is we help train young collaborative printers and put them in situations where they can help artists achieve their own aesthetic and conceptual goals through the printmaking medium. The Museum of Modern Art has a very unique and rare open print collection. And what that means is you can call the print department up and request an appointment to view works out of the collection in person. There are very few collections. The Metropolitan Museum of Art and the Library of Congress also have open collections that have this level of access to this high quality of artwork. 
So it's a treat for any printer or artist to be able to come in and look at works from artists like Jasper Johns, Robert Rauschenberg, Pablo Picasso, Ellen Gallagher, Elizabeth Payton, Elizabeth Murray, Emil Nolda, the list can go on and on. This open collection is in some ways one of the things that ties to the print studio open access, which is a means of making work in a contemporary digital studio in conjunction with a print exhibition. The print studio offers an opportunity for artists to come in and work with equipment on their own, not necessarily in collaboration with a printer, but also in a way that they can use the resources of the museum to influence the works that they make. One of the major reasons that printmaking has survived and continues to thrive is its collaborative nature. Printmaking is never done wholly within a vacuum. It's a cumulative knowledge process that we add to as participants in it, either as a patron of the arts, as someone who reads a book, someone who picks up a newspaper, someone who makes a fine art print, or someone who comes into a museum. There's a dialogue that is entered into when you're working in the printed medium. In contemporary digital format, you are still working with the same ideology that created it in the first place. You interface with a keyboard, which is referencing the typewriter, which is an early form of printmaking in and of itself, which is an impression from one surface to another. In contemporary times, the collaborative spirit and collaborative process can be seen through different social media platforms. People often ask, well, will there ever be printed material 100 years from now? And I always reference the fact that we've been making footprints or impressions since we began. And as a result, there will always be a need for the tactile relative to our human experience. And artists will always find a way to take the intangible and make it more tangible. The visual experience for an artist is really to take that which we can't explain in words and translate it to experience. So printmaking will always exist in some form and will evolve as artistic ideas evolve and as our needs as a society change relative to what it is that we need to tell one another in ways that we can't communicate verbally. Is that printmaking is the most accessible art form that we know today. It's accessible because of how we experience it in our daily lives through mass media and popular culture. And it's also accessible from the standpoint of adding value to the voice of any artist or any individual. The fact that you can send an email to 100,000 recipients at the click of a button is a form of printmaking. It's a dissemination of any individual's ideas out to a large group of people. So an exhibition like this is in some ways to help people understand that their voice has value as well and that there are a lot of different ways in which your voice's value can be felt throughout.